Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and this is our next installment of the Arcturian Anthology. Today, we're going to be looking at the section of the Arcturian Anthology labeled Yeshua ben Yosef, which of course is Yeshua, Jesus. And last week, we looked at Magdalene's section. Now, once again, if you missed last week's ex episode and you want to go back and watch it, that will be down in the description box under show notes, under the playlist, Understanding the Magdalene. Now, as I said last week with Magdalene's recording, one thing I want to remind everybody is, is this idea of confirmation bias, especially when you're working with channeling. Of course, all channeling needs to be taken with a grain of salt simply because the information is coming through a conduit in this instance it's coming through the conduit of tom kenyon and even though i believe that most channelers are trying to do the best they can to translate what information they're getting you also have to remember that every single person is subject to how they were raised and to the information that they were given now once again we were taught for many generations that Yeshua or Jesus was crucified. And we know now, according to the missing books of the gospel, that that is not true. The Jesus story is really the Mithra story. Um, and that the real person who was Yeshua was actually never crucified, which makes a lot of sense because the real God doesn't require human sacrifice. The real God does not require drinking of blood, all that kind of stuff. That's that's Satan's game. So, but but before, with that being said, before all this stuff, this information came out when this book was channeled, of course, people were under the impression that he was crucified. And so if anything comes up with this, I always say that, I think that's just confirmation bias coming from the channeler, that this is the story we've been told over and over and over again. So it starts to become true in our heads. And so information we're given, we're filtering it through that reality even though that reality might not be real and i hope that makes sense so before we get into that i just wanted to say that once more and also before we get into this book today i do want to take a brief moment to get a word from our awesome sponsors my uncle dan used to talk about qtr QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. 
Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asiya's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life, every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed. But what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. With the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius genius that in my opinion they really really honored and respected God's design because you see when you take the liquid redox you are allowing your body its own intelligence because the redox is just a tool it's just the signaling for your cells your cells your body is designed to heal itself and this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself and so when you take the liquid your body knows knows exactly where it needs to send the redox, what part of your body is wounded, what part of your body isn't so stable. And so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be. Now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes, friends, I am 40 years old and as, as the aging process does occur, the body starts to droop a little bit. And no, I've never had children, so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if I had used them to feed a child, but they still are. You know, I got boobs and they, 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 they are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back. 
which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare. Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement. But from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and J or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside of the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not going to charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. All right, you guys. So Yashua ben Yosef's channeling starts on page 111, 111, which is some of my lucky numbers, numbers I see all the time. But before we get into it, I want to read this quote from Ektara, who we've already we've already done Ektara's channeling, but I just want to read you a quote that he has on the page opposite uh, Yeshua's channeling. One of the impediments to your human potential lies in a narrow perspective on history. Many of your religions have deified beings who were not supernatural, but were, in fact, simply advanced alien species. All right, let's get into Yeshua's channeling. I am also Akturian, but I am not Sunat Kumara. Many reading this, no doubt, may know my name as Yeshua, or as they say, Jesus of Nazareth. I wish to clear away a few misconceptions about me and my message. I am an Acturian. He was also a Lyran, as we covered last week as well. The Lyrans carry the Christ consciousness. Um, that's why they have an orange hue about them, and that's why they take on the shape of a lion. A lot of times they shapeshift, as we talked about with Magdalene for the Sophia Code, um, because their job is to try to destroy the demons. Okay, and they were, Yeshua and Magdalene were both Egyptian, not Jewish. Again, if you miss, I don't want to repeat everything I said last week uh, for those. I don't want to beat a dead horse for those that have already, were here last week. But if you miss that episode, again, it will be in the description box under the playlist, Understanding the Magdalene from last week. I am an Acturian, an animation of me in the form of a human being lived upon this earth. The Bible, a highly distorted document... <laughs> Reports that I was born of a virgin birth, that Mary, my mother, received the Holy Spirit. In point of fact, it was an Octarian conception. In the joining of these two, I was conceived. And although I had a human body, half of my genetic inheritance was Octarian. No, we see in the missing books of the Bible that he was born of Yosef, his father. Um, and again, this, I think, is confirmation bias from Tom Kenyon. I'm assuming from what I've read of other works of Tom Kenyon, which I love, I love Tom Kenyon's books, but I'm assuming he's never studied the missing books of the Bible and the stuff that Yeshua actually said. Um, so anyway, if anybody knows Tom Kenyon, I would love to get him on the channel. Um, so yeah, I, I can, you know, if we're taught about a virgin birth, what, let's be honest, what is a virgin birth? It's a demonic, it's a demonic sex ritual, you know, for a woman to be forced upon without her consent to be impregnated by a demon. That's what we see in like eyes wide shut, the edited scenes, right? So Yeshua was conceived of both Yosef, his father and his mother, whose name was not Mary, but Alma Mari. That was her name, Alma Mari. So um, 
And that's how all kids, they, there's, listen, just because you're born of a regular human birth doesn't mean it's not miraculous. I mean, have you, I mean, sit around, think about it. For those of you who have had children, like think about how miraculous that is. Two human beings in a very sacred act of making love, of joining their bodies together, create a human being. Where two literally become one. You know, even though our souls are not a part, our, bo our bodies, are, our, our lives are just the expression, the Shakti of our soul, you are literally in this human body a combination. I am a combination of Lee Watson and Alice Bryce Bradley. I'm a combination of the two of those people and their distinct family lines. That's, I, I'm a walking, my sister and I are walking embodiments of the joining of two people. You watching right now are a walking embodiment of the joint. You represent both sides of your family, two people, your mother and your father. That is a miracle. So make no mistake about it. Just because Yeshua was born like you and I were born does not make it any less than a miracle. Out of all, I mean, you think about this, like out of all the DNA that my parents both carry, this is the DNA I was with, I was left with. Now, yes, both of my parents have blue eyes. So absolutely, I was going, my sister and I were going to be born with either blue or green eyes because green eyes is an offshoot of blue eyes. There's no way for my sister and I to have brown eyes because both of my parents carry the recessive trait. More than likely, before my sister and I were conceived, we were going to be born blonde because both sides of my family are predominantly blonde. But there's other things about our genetics that out of all the generations behind them, we could have pulled from. I have a cousin who has red hair. My great grandfather, his great grandfather had red hair. It took many, it took two, three generations for that redhead to pop back up again. So the fact that you are here right now, look at your body, look at, at, look at your hands. Maybe you can look at your hands and say, wow, that's my mom's hands or wow, that's my dad's hands. Look at you and, and think about everything in that miracle or that, that sperm hit that egg and that flash of light happened. And everything within you was joined together by two coming together. One person cannot create a baby. It takes two. Two become one, not three, not five, not one, but two, two become one. It's magic. It is so magical. And so I just wanted to put that. So stop thinking that because Yahshua was not born of a virgin birth means he's not special. That's bullshit to think that because the God that I believe in, the God that I know you guys believe in, the source creator, made it magical for all of us. When the sperm hits the egg, there's a flash, there's a spark of light. That's your spark of light. Look at your child. For women who have conceived, when that baby is growing in your stomach, that baby is growing from both the DNA of you and your partner. And it's molding together to make this perfect human being. That's freaking magical. So I just, I don't want people going around thinking, oh, because Yeshua was born of a man and a woman, it's not special. Fuck yeah, fuck it. Fuck yeah, it is. Every single, my nephew and both my nieces, when all three of them were born, it was fucking special. When you were born, when you were born, regardless of whatever circumstances your family was in when you were born, it was fucking special because you were special. Just as you are. There's nothing that has to be magical. You are magic. You don't have to be created. You are it. You are magic. So don't let the church, don't let anybody out there make you feel like you are less than or make any type of childbirth that's normal childbirth less than. It's not less than. It's exactly how the divine creator, the source creator, the real God, created it to be and how amazing is that how amazing is it that you get to make love to someone that you you um, for women okay women 
for myself included, when I'm with a man that I love, that I would, I love this person. And in that moment of, of intimacy, through that act of love, of ultimate love, a child is created. Don't tell me that's not special. Anyway, I digress. So let's get back to it. Through my Octarian nature, I could easily enter into contemplative states of mind and make contact with my fifth dimensional self. For I, as Yahshua, was just a small speck of myself that resided in the fifth dimension. Can you imagine how strange it was to be a human being 2,000 years ago, possessing half of my being that was so advanced and not of this world? Well, Tom Kenyon, that's another confirmation bias because it actually wasn't 2,000 years ago. But that's a story for a different day. That's not, we're not going to talk about that now. It was not actually that long ago. As I grew to be a man and understood my nature more fully, I realized that my fifth dimensional aspect possessed technologies I could access. And most of the miracles reported and attributed to me were as a result of my using this fifth dimensional technology. My message was simple. Love one another this attribute this capacity to empathize with others is an Acturian trait i thought the mission would be simpler than it was i did not anticipate fully the backlash from human stupidity greed arrogance and an inherent need to subordinate others in the moment of my resurrection as reported in the gospels my body disappeared from the tomb No, okay, yeah, this is confirmation bias from, from, because I'm reading ahead right now, from Tom Kenyon. Tom, Tommy, Tom, Tom, buddy, buddy, Tom Kenyon, buddy. Please read the missing books of the Bible, and please understand that the Bible we have now is not, it's copyrighted by the Windsor family, buddy. It's not true. It's com a complete fictional, it's a work of fiction based off of real people who lived but it's a complete so mm. but let me read what he says in the moment of my resur make resurrection as reported in the gospels my body disappeared from the tomb what was not reported because it was not understood by such primitive minds was that i used octarian technology to do so i simply shifted my physical body's atomic components into the fifth dimension using octarian light form technology yeah, and that's a form. Of, I don't think Tom Kenyon meant any bad by this. I just um, I think this is spiritual manipulation. We're seeing this in the community, like people saying people are going to resurrect from the dead. Y'all, that's not what that means. Resurrection, as far as the story of Tammuz and Ishtar, Horus, all that kind of stuff, that has to do with your awakening, your enlightenment, the the moment that you have that prativa moment, as it said in the Yoga Sutras, there's a flash of illumination, when you realize, when you, you have the inner knowing of who you really are, not what you've been programmed to be, it's literally not rising from the dead, and that, my friends, to rise out of the graves is a zombie fucking apocalypse, I'm sorry, we've got to be smarter than this, we've got to be smarter than this, spirituality 101 if you and i know a lot of people here watching have been majorly indoctrinated into religions religions are not spirituality there's a huge difference between a religious practice and a spiritual practice okay if you study the ancient text of the east including the missing books of the bible the gnostic books speak of this as well they mirror each other spirituality 101 i'm going to use the sanskrit words because that's my area of expertise the sanskrit words for what make you you the holy trinity if you will is prakriti purusha and ishvara these are sanskrit words prakriti is nature purusha is your soul or the deepest expression of your soul ishvara is god all right the only thing that truly connects to God through you is Parusha, is the soul. Your Prakriti, your nature, your body, is the Shakti or the expression of the soul. But it is not the soul. 
All right. So as I just talked about a baby being born, the creation of the DNA, the DNA that was needed, that your soul needed when that flash of light happened, when the sperm hit the egg and the soul entered into that particular sperm and that particular egg that carried particular DNA that you needed for your experience and your soul needed for your experience and its existence. Okay. So the body, because the body is nature, because it's property, it has two laws that it lives by. There are two laws of nature. This, the first law, the main law, is nature is something that has a birth, a life, and a death, a beginning, a middle, an end. And because of this, the second law is now true, which is that it's constantly in states of change. Because it goes on a samskaric cycle, or a beginning, a middle, an end, a birth, a life, a death, it's always going to be fluctuating in states of change. Your own body, for example, you were born, I was born at 5 pounds, 11 ounces, a tiny little thing. I'm now about five foot five. I weigh about 110 pounds. At 40 years old, my body grew, it changed, it fluctuated. Um, in about 10 years time, I'll go through menopause. That's another change 10, 15 years from now. So you see there's constantly changes happening because it's following the laws of nature. That's why people's weight fluctuate, right? It's following laws of nature. Now, because it has to follow the laws of nature, that's what means, that's why why your body itself is not eternal, because it's, it's bound by nature. Your soul, however, the Purusha, is experiencing this nature as it's experienced to know itself. Your soul is eternal. You cannot kill a soul. The soul, just after this ride is done, after this life is done, it will go into its next experience. So with that being said, when a body dies, now death is the ultimate illusion, meaning that your soul isn't dying and your soul is what brings the light behind your eye, right? If you've seen, if you've been to a funeral and you have seen a dead body, you know that that body looks nothing like the person that you knew in life, right? It's because their soul is gone. So it's the person's soul that gives the body life, that gives the body expression, the light behind someone's eyes, the kindness behind someone's eyes, the emotional state of compassion. That information is through the soul. So once that soul is gone, the body looks different, okay? Once a person dies, the soul leaves the body. The soul knows when its last day is here, as does God. Your days are numbered, like we all know that. We are at the amnesia of our brain, or chittam, our brain doesn't know this, but our soul knows. And our soul's at peace with it, right? It's just our mind that's not in peace with it. It's not a death. The soul, it's, it's like changing outfits. It's like um, I just ate lunch and I had an asia bowl for lunch and I was cold afterwards. So I put I put my sweater on, right? It's just an outfit change. It's all it is. It's not something that's permanent. After I finish work today, working, I'll go and take my hot bath and put my pajamas on. Like, it's just an outfit change. That's how the soul sees it. It's as simple as an outfit change. Okay? But here's the thing. When the body dies, the soul leaves. All right? So if you've got dead bodies hanging out in a graveyard and somebody comes and resurrects them, they're resurrecting an empty vessel. Because the soul's not there. The soul's already in its next existence, doing what it needs to do. You know what needs an, an empty vessel? Which we know what would love to have an empty vessel? Demons. So we, you guys who think that, that people are going to be resurrected, first of all, the things that I would ask you is, first of all, you need to understand that your body and your loved one's body has fuck all to do with their soul. It's just an expression. It's just the Shakti. It's a, the body is a beautiful miracle. It's amazing. It's wonderful. But it's just for this time period. You've been in many bodies. Just like I like the outfit I'm in today. It's very comfortable. I think it makes me look very slim. I really like it. But at the end of the day, I'm just going to take it off and put it in a dirty clothes hamper. And I'll wear something else tomorrow, right? Does that make sense? 
And so when the soul's done, and I would say to you all who, who really think that people are going to be resurrected, first of all, what kind of black magic is that? Who are you following? Because I would say to you, where is your trust in God? Are you so desperate to cling on to this life because you fear the unknown of death? And if you do fear the unknown of death, that's okay. A lot of people do. A lot of people do. But that's something you need to sit with yourself. Because if you have a, a, a trust in God, in your source creator, and a trust that there is a plan, then you know that once death comes, that plan continues. So why would you want to hijack somebody else's experience soul experience with god why can't you rest in peace knowing that your loved ones are off on their next experience and you will join them again one day do you really not trust god enough do you really want to hijack or try to hijack god's plan if you had a spouse that passed away a few years ago, I know you miss him. I know you do. Grief is so incredibly hard. It's 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 so painful to go through grief. I I I, I get that. I I so if you have like a loved one, a spouse or a parent that passed away a few years ago, do you not trust that God has a plan for their soul? Do you not trust that? And do you want to hijack that and try to bring them back to experience that they've already graduated from? They've already graduated from this experience. They did their time. It was time for them to move on. You will move on one day too, and you'll see them again. But are you going to be that selfish that you would try to hijack that? Are you that distrusting in God? That's the question. Is ask yourself, do you have full trust in God? Because if you do, then you would know that your loved ones are fine. You don't need to resurrect their bodies. Their, their soul's not going to be there anyway. When the body comes back, if the body is resurrected and the soul's not in it, it's not the person you loved. It's an empty vessel. It's like a dirty clothes hamper full of dirty clothes. It's nothing there. And I think some of this confusion does come from the controllers, the powers that be, because they, they want us, because that's man's suffering, right? That's what Patanjali says in the Yoga Sutras, is that man's suffering, man's human condition, is that who man thinks he is is not really who man is. So I, I think I'm Bryce. No, I'm just, this is just the experience for this life. I'm actually a, an eternal soul. And so the church and other religions have you believing that your identity is your forever. Well, that's not what Yahshua taught. If you read the, read the missing books of the Bible, he speaks a lot about, he says the same things Patanjali says in the Yoga Sutras. So this idea of a resurrection is you understanding this. Your soul being free because it understands that the body is only temporary. So just that's something to just really think about. If you're, you know, don't don't fall for these scam artists out there. It's part of the reason why I've tried to really pull away from this community and just do spiritual stuff and research on my own is because there are so many people out there who are scamming you. They're doing the same thing. That the church has done. They're playing on your fear of the unknown. But all fear is. Is false evidence appearing real. And it's not unknown. Yes you went through a veil of amnesia. Before you came, came into this existence. That's the deal for third density. Is you need that amnesia. In order to create the friction. In order to be in these situations. Where you have these realizations. But the, the truth of the matter is. Your soul does know what's coming. It does know why it's here. Your mind doesn't, but your soul does. And you're going to be fine. Your loved ones are going to be fine. Your loved ones who have passed away, they're fine. They're where they're supposed to be in this here now moment. And you are where you're supposed to be in this here now moment. I know grief is rough. I know it's so hard. And if you have good healers, Reiki healers, teachers to help you move through that grief, though, 
it can be some of the most, there can be so much wisdom gained. Just, just really think about these things though. Like don't try to hijack God. Don't try to practice black magic because you don't trust that your loved one's soul is where it's supposed to be in this moment. Because I promise you it is. So anyway, let's get back to it. Very shortly after my death and disappearance from the earth, in fighting and jealousy took sway, and my most beloved disciple, my most beloved student, who in truth became my teacher, was my my wife, Magdalene. Magdalene. Yeah, um, if you read the Magdalene manuscript, Yahshua was her, her student. <laughs> she was his teacher. <laughs> Yet, paradoxically, she was ushered out by the narrow, petty minds of the remaining disciples. Not, no, it was the controllers because they want, as I said last week, it's because Magdalene represents the divine feminine, which is the intuitive art. So that's why they had to degrade Magdalene was so that you lose touch with your soul so that you go back into that Sam Skark cycle of fear, which is generated by what I was just talking about, thinking that your body is who you are and not realizing your body isn't your soul. That's why they degraded it. Listen, the controllers are many things. Stupid ain't one of them. They know what they're doing. They had to degrade Magdalene because of how powerful she was and what she represents inside of you and thus how powerful you actually are. I find it ironic and um, I find it ironic and full of pathos that I was faced with a similar choice as reported by Sunat Kumara. To an Acturian, the mission is always the most important thing, eclipsing the needs of the heart. I left behind my beloved Magdalene and our daughter, a fact not reported in the Gospels. Yes, Tom Kenyon. Oh, Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. It, they had five children, Tom, the channeler, because I, I, think, I don't think Yastro was telling you this. I think you were trying to figure out what he was saying and you were filtering it through what you knew. And what you knew is based on fa false doctrine. If you read the missing books of the Bible, Magdalene and Yeshua had five children. They are spoken about in the missing books of the Bible. And apparently under the Vatican, some of them actually have their own gospels. They became the Merovingians, which brought in Tartaria, the Merovingians. Merovingian means the line of Magdalene because she was, she was the main one, right? So if anybody knows Tom, oh, tell him to give me a call. I'd love to bring him on. And I apologize, guys. They're building next door. So if you hear hooting and hollering and banging, that's that's the construction workers. I, too, as does Sunat Kumar, look back and wonder, would I do it all over again? I agree with Sunat when he says that we Acturians must begin to bring the equation of the heart into the overarching commitment to our mission. I am comforted by the fact that I am with my beloved Magdalene, but I am disheartened by what has happened to my message. Instead of reaching upwards in themselves, those who claim to follow me look to me for their salvation. That I agree with. That's what I've been saying. No one is coming to save you. Yeshua was a savior, yes, as was Magdalene, but the word savior means to save yourself. You got to save yourself. That's what he's saying. I'm going to read that again because all of his missing books in the Bible speak about the same practices that are spoken about in the Vedic text, the yogic text, about saving yourself. No one can ascend for you. The white hats cannot ascend for you. You have to do that yourself within you. As Yeshua said, the kingdom of heaven is inside of you. And paradoxically, so is hell. You get to choose. All right, let me read this again. I am comforted by the fact that I'm with my beloved Magdalene, but I am disheartened by what has happened to my message. Instead of reaching upwards in themselves, those who claim to follow me look to me for their salvation. That was never my intention or communication. There were many translations of my words, most of them inaccurate. But in essence, what I attempted to convey to those who followed my way was that they would be saved by the elevation of their own life, intelligence, and freedom. Ding, 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 ding. Let me read that once again. 
for those in the back who did not hear. I am comforted by the fact that I am with my beloved Magdalene, but I am disheartened by what has happened to my message. Instead of reaching upward in themselves, those who claim to follow me look to me for their salvation. That was never my intention or my communication. There are many translations of my words, most of them inaccurate. But in essence, what I attempted to convey to those who followed my way was that they would be saved by the elevation of their own life, intelligence, and freedom. I find it despicable, unfortunate, but also understandable that my truth became so distorted. By saved, I mean saved from living a lower life, saved from a diminished intelligence, and saved from the imprisonment of the soul. Those who wait for me to return to save them from their own misuse of life, their own stupidity, and their imprisonment of themselves and others through dogma will be sorely disappointed. One of my greatest regrets, besides leaving Magdalene behind, was the temporary loss of our daughter in my life, but I was single-minded on the mission. Now that that mission is complete, and I look at what has transpired on earth in my name, I am sickened to my stomach by what I witness. How can anyone bearing my name, calling himself or herself a Christian, propagate hate instead of love? It is inconceivable to me as an Octurian that such distortions of my message could occur, having been a human. However, upon this earth, I understand. As Sunat Kumara mentioned, intergalactic beings are both benevolent and malevolent. Some are kind and some are not. And so the same holds true for humans. It is a question that each human must answer for him or herself. Will you be the benevolent force in your world or will you be a malevolent one? If your intention is to be a benevolent force in your life, then I'm welcoming you, whether you call yourself a Christian or not. If, however, your intent is to be a malevolent force and to spread hatred in this world, do not call yourself a Christian. For my namesake, I make this request.